What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is the part 5 of a story where Izuku became the shadow hero. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more information. Now, let's get into part 5. It was four weeks later when Izawa gave an interesting notice to them all, in a week's time you will have your summer exams. Obviously there will be your class exams, but there will be your practical exams. This is going to be fun. The number one student, the class representative himself, the one called the shadow hero. Monarch spoke. Agreed, this time I will beat you. Momo, the student in the second place said. During the four weeks the two became closer friends with Kaioka, not as close as Izuku was with Katsumi, Shoko and Heian. We will try our hardest sir. The third place student said, Tenyuida. A three-way electric bolt was sent between three females, those three females always took fourth, fifth and sixth places in the class. Though they always swapped places. This time Shoko was in fourth, Kitsumi was in fifth, whilst Heian was in sixth. Aminari broke down in tears, I cannot do it. That man was in twentieth place. Izuku looked over him and spoke, I can help you all earn, we can meet in our dorms after. Thank you Izuku. The blonde hugged him which Izuku patted the back of him. And I joined an Izu bro? The bro of bros asked. Sure he then looked around, if anyone wants to join feel free. He then looked at Momo, knowing what her pleading eyes mean, Momo will too help. Lunch. Izuku, Mei, Tenya, Shoko, Heian, Kitsumi, Koji, Momo, Kaioka, Fumikage and Rikido, all sat on the table just chatting to each other thinking about their practical exams. During the previous four weeks nothing interesting happened, Izuku concentrated leveling his skills especially shadow manipulation. As there were no gates to be opened just bar heaven's tower and the mysterious key. He was planning to go into them after the exams. Itsuka came close to them, you are talking about the practical exam right? Then you nodded whilst Momo asked her a question, do you know what it could be? Though after a second of thinking, Izuku thinks that we are going to be against teachers from what happened at the USJ and the recent movements of the loge of villains. Oh okay, but from one of my friends from year 3, they told me that the first year summer exams are against robots. Itsuka told them, but when Nito wanted to complain she just hit his head, not knocking him out this time. For some reason some of the students smiled at that with relief coming from them, I am sure we are against teachers, Nezu hinted at that a while back, though I could always ask Najire. That may be true, during the four weeks Izuku learned about strategy against villain organizations, improving security and cork analysis. It wasn't as hard like being taught by recovery girl, she banned him from using his quirk against minor cases, due to her wanting him to practice normal first aid. Though he did have it be leveled up twice during the four weeks was alright in his books. Izuku was taught how to operate the machines like the X-ray machine as an example. It was interesting when Izuku asked if he could start healing the Big M, but told Tashinori that he may have a way of bringing him back to his former bodily strength, but it will take some time to get it ready. The healing process took 30 minutes of Izuku's time, during this time he had to drink a mana replenishing potion. At the end of it, Izuku healed up the lung where it had multiple puncture marks, majority of the liver, recreated his stomach, and some scar healing, with some minor healing done to the other organs too. He told All Might to take it slowly from eating more fluid foods to then having heavier foods. Ashinori now has time increased back to 4 hours per day, then the 1 hour and 30 minutes, he had tears of joy and promised him that he will make it up to him. Dorms. Izuku sat in the main living room of the dorms with all of the students around him. Due to Izuku's intelligence being at a high level, he developed a photographic memory and the deduction skills too increased amazingly. This allowed him to become the top student of his class, and now he was teaching or explaining some topics to his classmates. It was quite funny seeing Denki short-circuit from the information he was presented, but nothing interesting happened. Some time later Izuku went towards his dorm saying he needs to prepare for training, it was true, but he was in a mood of thinking for some reason. For the last four weeks, one Momo Yayoi Rozu became closer to Izuku, but for what reason? Both of them were on speaking terms, he wouldn't have called them friends then, but now definitely friends. Talking about friends Shoko, Kitsumi and Heian, started to become more than friends. He knew that Kitsumi wanted to be with him, but he had a girlfriend that he loves. He just sighed at that not wanting to have a larger headache, sometimes he wished some of his soldiers could speak. Izuku's Pov. What can I do? I thought whilst looking at my skills. I did buy a rune stone, even though my cloak is amazing I could use more protection, so buying the skill. Elemental resistance for 55 million gold was worth it, especially when my body can withstand higher temperatures. I realized that I needed this when I remembered that elemental quirks are pretty common, and the gates, having already been in the cold and the heat type of gates was understandable too, right? Equals 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 skills equals equals equals. Passive. 
Unknown, Max. Muscularity, LV.1. Advanced Dagger Arts, LV.4. Advanced Spear Arts, LV.4. Elemental Resistance, LV.1. Active. Sprint, LV.6. Bloodlust, LV.4. Fireball, LV.5. Vital Strike, LV.3. Stealth, LV.6. Dominator's Touch, LV.4. Spear Throw, LV.5. Healer, LV.8. Shadow Manipulation, LV.3. Dob Specific. Shadow Extraction, LV.1, and 354 400 fifths. Save Shadow, LV.2, and 354 390 firsts. Skill. Elemental Resistance LV.1, Passive. The ability to be protected from different elements, as a side effect of this skill is the gaining of resistance to extreme temperatures. The range is minus 50c to 500c. Then muttering to myself, I only have a week to train, Nezu Kinda banned me from using training fields to train my shadows against each other. Though I do realize that they slowly level up. Which was true, I did notice an increase by one level for all of them. I had to accept the promotions of my four winged angels and the mid-tier Nomu. 500c isn't much, I remember Endeavor's flames being at around 2000c if he tried. Then realization struck me, I could ask some of my angels to throw fire at me, this will allow them hopefully to level up, whilst my resistance goes up too. End of Izuku's Pav. After that Izuku got to a training ground, Delta to be more precise. He quickly texted a friend who is 2 years old, then him to meet him and possibly train more. Najira and Izuku became fast friends, and he could possibly say that he is one of his closest friends. He saw that she will be there in 10 minutes, so firstly he asked his four winged angels to shoot fire at him. When Najira saw the text, she back him way happier than she was at that moment. Though when she saw Izuku being shot with fire she screamed and then run towards Izuku, seeing if he was fine. But what came out of the flames nearly caused her to have a nosebleed. The clothes that he was wearing had nearly all gone up by flames. She could hear him say, damn that was hot. Then he poured some water of his exposed upper body, making the image of sweat covering his body. At that moment her brain stopped and she fell backwards with a goofed grin, for some reason she found that hot too. Izuku looked back and shouted in worry, Najire. In the headquarters of the HSPC. Do we know what the boy's quirk is? A woman that is loved by some and hated by many asked. No Madam President, not even his father knows. A worker under her spoke to her in a respectful tone, we suspect that only Nezu and possibly Maruko know the true extent of his quirk. We do theorize that he has a taking part of his quirk. The takening part A. The last one that was documented died mysteriously. She spoke with a unnoticable smirk. Get in contact with Nezu, if he doesn't spill then Maruko. Hi Madam President. The man said whilst he left. Soon Izuku Midoriya we will know if you could be our greatest ally or our greatest enemy. Madam President just looked outside with a smile, soon, very soon. With Izuku. After Najire fainted Izuku placed her under a tree whilst he was sparing with Igris. He only raised the level of that elemental resistance to LV.2, but it took him over 30 minutes of fire abuse. The temperature was interesting, the range is now from minus 60c to 750c. Izuku knows he is strong, possibly he can be the strongest in the world soon. But the next challenge is to take the summer exams by its horns and win. Oh and making Najire wake up, she must have been worried about me being on fire. Which was true, the stress of seeing one of her closest friends nearly fry, then seeing his body can raise some levels like stress. It took another 10 minutes when Najire Hado started to wake up, she noticed that she was under a tree with Izuku's jumper over her top body. The Net just smiled at that, and continued to watch Izuku spar with Igris for some time, after 5 minutes she started to wake up, and just in time seeing Izuku fly over from a punch Igris made. Oh hey Najire feeling better. She giggled seeing that Izuku was hanging upside down from a tree branch, thanks, I am feeling way better. You good up there? Sighing he spoke in a low tone, never been better. After that the two spared with each other, with both giving tips to each other and just talking in general. After an hour they both got an outdoor dinner from Izuku, and continued to spar until 9pm, where they had to leave for their dorm. Waving goodbye seeing her go to her dorm, Izuku left for his not noticing a pair of twitching eyes. Week later, the paper exam wasn't as hard as Denki thought it would be. They had maths, Japanese language, English, geography, modern literature, heroics, theory, and history. It was split up between four days, with two exams per day, whilst on their fourth day they had heroics, theory, exam in the morning, whilst heroics, practical, exam later on the day. And who would have thought that Denki did not yet think he failed an exam? Naughty with the rest of the class are getting ready for the exam, their hero suits on with game faces, expert of the blonde, Denki. 
His face was of a worried but excited person, as he could let go whilst fighting against robots, right? Yeah, Dinky was fucked. They are not fighting robots, but teachers. The teacher he is facing is the one who kinda hated humans, Nezu. He heard Izuku whisper good luck, but he should be wishing him good luck seeing was he is going to face against. With Izuku. He was sitting near recovery girl looking at all of the screens, all of the teams have left a plan, heck even Katsumi did that. Though Izuku was left alone as a single man team, unfairness to its basics. Though he is not complaining at the quest he did receive. Alarm. Quest has been formed. Win against all odds. Win the battle against the supposed villain by knocking him out. If you run away or fail a penalty will be given. Reward 1. Stat points plus 10. Reward 2. Plus 5% to physical pain nullification. Reward 3. Akatsuki Geki. The reward 3 is pretty interesting, Akatsuki He. Izuku thought to himself. The first match was Ijiro and Rikido against Cementos. Izuku thought it was due to them having a time limit whilst Cementos did not. At the beginning it all went pretty well with the both boys destroying the cement constructs, but later on they begin to tire out. Even with Ijiro's unbreakable form that he can hold for nearly two minutes they were swallowed up by cement making it their loss. Ijiro and Rikido lost their match. The second match was Tsayu and Fumikage against Ectoplasm. Both have a rounded up arsenal, and with the, the frog girl swallowing the cuffs, until Dark Shadow placed it onto the original Ectoplasm's body. They won but at the cost of them being stuck on a wall from the large clones attack. Tsayu and Fumikage won their match. The third match was Tenya and Hei in against Power Loader. The ground was littered by traps set up by the said man, so Tenya's quirk was pretty useless. Hei and tried using the flouting sword trick, but was nearly shot down from the air by their enemy. Later on it was decided by the two students to risk it all, with Tenya using Recipro Burst, whilst Hei and blocked some of the scrap nell of the bombs. They won but barely in the time limit provided. Tenya and Hei and won their match. The fourth match was probably the most interesting so far, it was a 3v1 matchup, but it wasn't easy anyways. Shoko, Momo and Kitsumi against their homeroom teacher, Azawa. Due to Izuku giving Azawa those drinks, the health of the said man increased allowing him to be more agile, faster and stronger. At the beginning Shoko was captured with Kitsumi being captured a minute later. Momo tried running away due to her lack of confidence in herself, but realized that if she couldn't do it then who could? She then run back blocking Azawa with Russian dolls exploding in his face. Momo then got Shoko out first then Kitsumi. She quickly produced a trap with the use of Shoko's ice and Kitsumi's explosion quirk. When Azawa came closer he used his dagger that was given by Izuku to cut the capture tape which shocked Momo, making her captured. Shoko tried to use her ice manipulation to create a sword, but all she could have done before Azawa cancelled her quirk with some ice. Though Kitsumi rushed in with her gauntlet ready, Azawa eyes widened at that and jumped back not being caught in the massive explosion, but he used his capture tape to smash Kitsumi into a pole, whilst used Shoko as a flying disc, making her go into a building. Izuku grimaced at that. The time did run out though, meaning the three girls have failed. They have an over-reliance of their quirks that Azawa showed and got them defeated. The man was supposed to be a C-rank hero, but in all reality he is an A-rank hero with his experience under his belt. Whilst the three girls could have defeated Azawa, they did not expect him to have a dagger that could cut Momo's improvised capture gear. Momo, Kitsumi and Shoko lost their match. The fifth match wasn't interesting much, Achako and Yuga against 13. The space woman wasn't a combative hero, but seeing her being able to quickly getting the upper hand was something to see. Achako and Yuga were both hanging by the rails, when Yuga said something that caused her to blush making her hand go off the rails. This made 13 stop using her quirk allowing Achako use Gunhead's martial arts style to quickly subdue 13. Achako and Yuga won their match. The sixth match was something that both Recovery Girl and Izuku had a laugh about, Mina and Denki against Nezu. It was a mess in all honesty, Nezu was using a crawler crane to destroy buildings while laughing manically and drinking tea. The two who usually have bottom of the class grades and poor control of their quirks were running for their lives not noticing that one exit was open for them to leave by. They did lose by the lack of time for their end. Mina and Denki lost their match. Koji and Kaioka against present Mick for the Seaventh match was more of a learning experience for Koji than anything. The gentle Anivis user was scared of bugs, but after seeing Kaioka bleeding from her ears, he forcefully made the bugs to attack present Mick, allowing the two to escape and win. Koji and Kaioka won their match. The eighth match was Toru and Mizo against Snipe. Izuku felt bad for Snipe at the end, but the fight was interesting. Using smoke bombs to make the vision of Snipe worsen and using Mizo as a distraction, while Toru went behind him and placed the cuffs on the sniper man. Though the Snipe accidentally elbowed Toru's breasts which was why Izuku felt bad. Toru and Mizo won their match. 
The last match before Izuku's one was Mashiro and Hanta against Midnight. At the beginning the purple mist came out from the seductive young woman towards the two boys. They snapped out a little too late, as Hanta thrown Mashiro back, whilst the tape man was caught by the gas. Mashiro used some of the tape to place over his mouth, whilst he went towards Midnight to fight her and get Hanta for them to win. But the whip made that Mashiro opened his mouth which caused some of the tape to come off allowing the gas inside the system of Mashiro's body, making him go unconscious. They lost, but Izuku wondered if the gas had any effect on himself. Panta and Mashiro lost their match. Even with the 50% weight bans that all teachers had 9 out of the 19 students had lost, which was a little worrying in all honesty. Next match is Izuku Midoriya against. Next match is Izuku Midoriya against All Might and Maruko. Izuku stood up with a slight upturn of his lips. Whist he left all of the students came back to the watching area with all of the teachers. Izuku's angels had healed them all up and are all in his shadow awaiting match. Baruka could fight a strong opponent again which he was interested by. The match will have different rules, the villains are not wearing the weights and you cannot escape. Izuku needs to capture both heroes or make them go unconscious or vice versa for the villains. There is also no time limit. The announcer which was a robotic voice came out. This caused some shock with the audience. The place where the battle was going to take place was a large city which looked abandoned. Tall sky skyscrapers with some smaller building in front of Izuku. Whilst entering the gate he made all of the normal grade, elite grade and night grade, spread out into the shadows, and when Izuku sent a signal they would come out. Smirking, come forth, Fisher, Dracula, Raphael, Baruka and Igris. The five named shadows came out from behind Izuku. Igris stood to the right of Izuku whilst Raphael to the left. Raphael was floating behind Izuku whilst Fisher and Dracula were to the left and right of Raphael respectively. The six auras of S-class beings was showing full force with even the people in the viewing booth felt it. Viewing booth. Shaking slightly, Mashira muttered, what powerful auras, we can even feel it here. But everyone heard it. Midnight licked her lips, that is pretty hot. But received glares from not only the three girls after Izuku heart, but most of the class and surprisingly a blunette who entered. Otomaki, Najire, Miro. What are you doing here? Azawa asked. Before any of the three could reply Nezu pipped in, I invited them here to watch Izuku. The gyre nodded her head, I watched him fight with all of his power, and tell me it is amazing. She wasn't her curious self asking all of the others questions which shocked the teachers, but made the other two of the big three look shocked, so this is the one she had her eyes on. The both of them thought. I want to go home Mirio, they are not looking like potatoes. Tamaki muttered. Mirio shook his head, anyways, hey we are the big three of you eh? The students had questioning glanced, but Shoko, Kitsumi and Hei in realizing Najira is the girl who is too interested in Izuku. Azawa explained, those three are the strongest students in UA. They are high ADS ranked material. Wouldn't Izubro be considered one of the strongest as he is facing All Might and Maruko? Najira answered, he is stronger than myself and I know that. But I am curious who would win. Then she looked at the big screen where Izuku had his five top soldiers behind him, she just smirked causing the other two to worry. Mirio though thought to himself, so this is the one who healed All Might up to his current strength, but also may have a way to get All Might back to his original strength. Interesting. He smiled at the end. Back to Izuku. The six walked closer to the two so-called villains. All Might laughed, is this all young Izuku? Rumi just face palmed which was reciprocated with everyone in the booth. Smirking, come forth. All around them 349 shadows came out of their hiding places. All Might realizing he messed up, he could sense 1 C rank, 183 B ranked, 165 A ranked and 5 S rank shadows, whilst Izuku was high S rank low international. Rumi looked around and saw the 71 angels in the air, whilst Zadkiel was leading them. The bears and other monster shadows were surrounding them including the cottage. The elves were hiding in buildings having their arrows pointing at them. The vampires were around them or some of them flying in their bat form. The alchemists were perched across the top of the buildings, whilst the magicians were at strategic points pointing their magical sticks at them. The leshi who she was worried about a lot were in each corner whilst she saw the nomu hanging of the buildings, flying castle or behind them. Do you want to give up? Izuku asked them whilst using the skill. Bloodlust towards them. Rumi and All Might both started to sweat knowing that Izuku is telling the truth, even if All Might was an international level hero, he didn't think he could take on this many opponents, including Izuku who is a low international level at best, but he didn't know all of Izuku's tricks. Viewing booth. All of their mouths barnage ears were wide open, there is a lot. Mina shouted. Azaw was smirked after he got out of his shock, he shook his head to get the shock properly out of the system. I see the bison is still doing good. My oh my, I knew Izuku had a lot but this many. Nezu spoke whilst looking at the screen in awe. 
One of the students on the other hand started to record the battle so they could show it to their boss. Stuttering out, where did he get them? Tamaki asked out. Nezu looked at the big three, I cannot tell yet, we will have to see what the future comes. He knew that 1A had a spy in their midst, he did check Izuku already with Tsukauchi, but he cannot ask the other students, as it may look pretty bad for the school. Though when he looked with the side of his eye towards the students, he saw a glimpse of glass. Widening his eyes minimally, he turned around looking at the screens, whilst thinking if the video will be posted online, then we may know who our spy is. This is a no personal camera zone. He didn't mind it actually, he could show that Izuku is a strong individual that can boost their school reputation a bit higher, as it did went down from the Hosu and USJ incident. Fight. They both shook their head, Izuku smiled sweetly and used the skill. Dominators touched to throw the both of them away. Don't kill them but capture them or knock them unconscious. With that command all but Igris run towards the two heroes who had their eyes widened. All black with some colors being shown occasionally. California smash Luna Ring both of them yelled whilst doing their attacks. Some of the shadows were destroyed, but both noticed that the shadows regenerated really quickly. Though Rumi had to miss a smash by Dracula whilst All Might had to dodge the water attack from a fisher. Ashinori didn't get to breathe yet as one of the Leshi elbowed him in the face, the number one hero then used, Texas Smash, destroying a couple of shadows. Fluffy jumped onto Maruko who had to dodge the earth-shaking jump, though she tried to kick Baruka away, but he blocked with his forearm. Some ice started to form on Rumi's leg, which caused her to jump back into a horde of vampires. Using the night killer dagger she had hidden away she slashed at them whilst dodging some sound attacks, ice arrows and claws. All Might wasn't faring far better, from all for one he had the ability of being invulnerable to some extent, but this is too much. The shower of ice arrows, fire attacks and other magical attacks at him was kind of overwhelming. He didn't shout the names of the attacks, though when the enemies are jumping on him he had to shout, Oklahoma Smash. This got all of the shadows of him, but now he had to fight fist to fist with Beast, the Nomu that Izuku defeated during the USJ incident. He remembered the shock of Bosukshin, but even with the amount of punches he gave out he couldn't get Beast of him. He noticed a movement to the left of him, and it was Dracula who punched All Might into a building. Rumi wasn't faring any better, the biggest trouble she had was when the long-range opponents are attacking her. Their teamwork is amazing, but Rumi was a one-woman army. Though when she got wet by a team of Vadinoi, she came to them and slashed them down, barely missing a fireball sent by one of the magicians. Then a Nomu decided to fight with her, the two mid-tier Nomus if she remembered right. Quickly, using her legs to smash the face of one of them away, whilst cutting the other one's head off she jumped back. Viewing booth. They are slowly but surely beating All Might away. One of the students muttered. Baruko is doing well with her blade. Rikido added. Where did she get it? Kayoka asked. The nerd gave it to her so she could fight against his shadows without worrying about herself. Kitsumi added. Azawa sensei, why is every shadow soldier attacking? Denki asked. How they are fighting is to overwhelm the opponent but strategically. Not every shadow in Izuku's army is a short-range combatant. The long-range ones are usually shooting their attacks when an opening is there. He explained. Mirio thought, even with my intangibility, this would be fun. I want to fight him. Whilst Najire had stars in her eyes. Shoko, Kitsumi and Hei in all realized how much the shadows improved. From their last training session with Izuku, but without the shadows they are high B to low A rank. Even if they were going full out, Izuku wouldn't even break a sweat. Back with Izuku. MP. 22,834 29,440. He was getting bored, he quickly drank a low level MP potion that gives back 5,000 MP back. He sensed that the two heroes were struggling, so making it easier for his shadows to subdue them, he used the skill. Shadow manipulation. Smirking, some of his shadows shot out towards All Might catching his shadow. Closing his fist, shadow tendrils shot out of All Might's shadow capturing his legs. Ashinori had his eyes widened when his legs were tangled together, but he was too late to realize that Beast punched his upper chest for him to fall back on his back, with Baruka freezing him up. Rumi realized that and used her legs to jump above, Luna fall. With that she crushed Beast under her leg and got All Might out of the ice with a shake. They both nodded to each other and rushed towards Izuku. Though neither expected Raphael to stand in front of them with Zadkiel and the Angel Army. They all began to shoot flames, All Might don't let the flames touch you. Hearing the advice they both jumped away seeing the destruction of the fire, especially from the ringed eyes Angel. Izuku saw an opportunity and using skill. Sprint he leapt up and gave a jaw-shattering punch at All Might's jaw, which made him go through five skyscrapers, whilst Rumi was punched inside the chicken cottage by Igris. The said skyscraper fell over the fallen body of All Might, whilst Rumi couldn't get out of the cottage. She mused to herself, the inside isn't that bad actually, it is more spacious than I originally thought. All Might you okay? 
she asked over her communication device. She could hear a groan, never been better. Her eyes widened as she saw the building explode upwards. He then shouted towards Izuku, you got me all pumped up. California smash. Then to the shadows that are coming over him quicker than he expected, double Texas smash. Baruko is captured. The device spoke. Rumi was trapped in the cottage with no way out, she tried kicking, slashing, breaking the door roof floor walls but nothing. This caused her to say she was captured as she couldn't do anything for the life of her. Shit, young Izuku captured Maruko. Now all of his forces are going to go against me. Tashinori taught with some panic. He expected some kind of attack, but not Izuku, putting his right hand out in front of his face with his middle and index finger crossed, his thumb pointing upwards, whilst the pinky and ringed finger are down. Izuku muttered, total darkness which got All Might and himself in a sphere of darkness. Tashinori could only see darkness all around him, with Izuku being the only color to be seen. From the outside it looks like a bubble of darkness floating. Maruko could only stare in awe at that. He saw All Might and lowered his hand, but rose both of them simultaneously in a way of showing something, do you like me new technique? The one that is inside this cannot move at all. I have saturated my shadow manipulation skill this with my mana, so no one could escape this. This is one of my ultimate moves domain expansion. Total darkness. Izuku seemed very proud of this. But the smirk that can cause shivers down the most hardened men. Though there was one thing that was weird for Izuku. Shadow extraction can be used on this target. 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 What? There are seven beings in All Might then Izuku looked at All Might seeing him unconscious but standing. Behind him were seven spectral figures. Are you the successor? A man with a bold head asked. Wait. No sir. I am Izuku Midoriya. Izuku answered, internally he was freaking out, was All Might like him or what? But you are the perfect host. The only woman of the group said, she had her eyebrow quirked. Izuku blinked dumbly, I am sorry ma'am, but what do you mean? One with grey hair walked up to Izuku, the worthiness that you show is more than enough for us to know. We seen you since number 8 punched you. This caused a massive amount of sweat drops to occur all around. The woman came up to Izuku and muttered, soon you will be getting our powers and not the false successor. Izuku Midoriya, you will have many challenges in front of you, but we will be with you again soon. With that the beautiful woman that kinda looked like his late mother kissed him on the lips gently. Izuku was frozen not knowing what to do, the kiss deepened and instincts kicked in with Izuku gently kissing her back, but it was over a second later. He didn't know that in reality that woman was giving a gift to him and was slightly blushing. Damn, what a good kisser. Izuku placed his hand on his lips and asked in a dazed voice, who are you? He needed to know if she was still alive and if he could find her. Nana Shimura, please find my body I will explain more then. With that all of the spectral figures left the domain with Izuku releasing the technique. After the domain was released then All Might came down in an unconscious heap on the floor. What? She is still alive, but where? I will need to search for her after I come back to the dorms. Izuku thought. All Might went unconscious, winner Izuku Midoriya the robotic voice came out. Izuku on the other hand went on a knee from the exhaustion caused by the spectral figures. Though he wouldn't forget the kiss given to him by one of the most beautiful ladies he have ever seen. He dispelled all of the shadows bar Raphael, so he could heal up All Might and Maruko. Rumi then walked up to Izuku and hugged him, well done Zuku, I didn't know that the chicken cottage could have hold me down. Hugging her back and with them gently kissing each other, whilst the view of a defeated and unconscious All Might behind them was something to see. I didn't know either, but it is good to know for the future for emergency captures. What was that at the end? A super move, domain expansion. Total darkness. I will tell you about the move later. Though coming closer to her ear he whispered, I need to talk to you of what happened inside she just nodded, and they all went back to the dorms from what Araba told them. Shadows from the shadow army leveled up. You completed the quest. Win against all odds. Win the battle against the supposed villains by knocking them out. If you run away or fail a penalty will be given. Reward 1. Stat points plus 10. Reward 2. Plus 5% to physical pain nullification. Reward 3. Akatsuki gate key. Will you accept? Accept reject. Accept, add 5 points to sense, 3 to vitality, and the 2 to intelligence. Accept reward 2 and 3. In his hand was a black key with a red cloud where the handle supposed to be. Rumi looked over his shoulder and spoke a new key. Yeah, I got it after defeating you and All Might. It is an S rank key, but it is under a collection edition. Item. Akatsuki gate key. Item class. S. Type. Key. Collection. 
one d2 akatsuki gate location top of mount fuji the zuku continued there is a problem this got her attention we have to get to mount fuji first she just laughed damn i barely survived the last s rank gate but this time i will have 2c she thought realistically the zuku smiled i have a late birthday present for you just meet me in my room after we are finished with whatever we are supposed to do first okay hi with that she kissed Izuku on the lips and separated for the time being. Bue dorms. As Izuku came into the dorm, what was that? Is it a new technique? How did you do it? Why was All Might unconscious at the end? What happened inside? The girl we all know and love bombarded Izuku with questions. Hey, hey calm down Najire. This was my ultimate move. Izuku tried calming her down. Bashiro asked, ultimate move. Izuku nodded, it is something that only we can do, like Tenya has his recipro burst. I have domain expansion. Total darkness. The recipro man smiled at Izuku for the recognition. Though he can continue, with a smirk pointing towards the three non-1A students, but I am sure the big three who are in the third year and the closest to become the future top 10 heroes of Japan explain. Hamaki just sent a glare that wouldn't even scare a puppy, Najire, and Mirio just smiled. With the later explaining, you should start developing ultimate moves after summer, but it is always to start early. Some of my ultimate moves are called Phantom Menace and Blinder Crush Eyeball Destroyer. This caused everyone to sweat drop. The chatter continued, but in a different place in UA, there was a talk between teachers. All Might dear is everything okay? Recovery girl asked, she was looking at a shaken up Tashinori. The final technique, what happened? Nezu asked interested. I was trapped, I couldn't move anything even my eyes. I saw darkness everywhere, all I could see was Izuku. But I swore I saw shadows in the place. The number one hero explained. At least you were not stuck in a chicken house. Rumi muttered, but everyone heard it. Nezu chuckled, it was funny, we could see disturbances in the structure, but it regenerated as fast. So only nine students failed the practical exam. I though it will be lower. As Awa mentioned. All eyes were on him, giving the look of what. Nezu explained, you defeated one third of them. And they are too reliant on their quirks. Heck I can't even cancel out Izuku's quirk, so he was lucky. He informed them, Izuku gave me a better dagger that can cut more too, this allowed me to get the upper hand too. Which he pulled out, it was more of a thank you and seeing that my old dagger was used up. It can cut through pretty much anything. Rumi then questioned him, you went to the C rank gate with him right? He nodded, yeah, the shadow bison was the boss. All Might looked questioning, so that was the weakest signature I felt, there were 5 solid S ranks with Izuku being a high S to low international. Only Dracula and Fisher were S ranked. Igris, Baruka and Raphael all were A-ranked though they did level up. You are lucky that we didn't face Baba Yaga, she would have been the grade above Izuku's elite knights. Rumi explained. How does the ranking grade thing work? All Might asked as he was pretty curious about this. Sighing, the bison is normal grade, they are around C-rank villain in strength. The four winged angels are the weakest whilst the Rusalka, the women-headed birds, are the strongest elite grade, which are B-rank villains in theory. There are levels in those grades, the lower the level the low rank they are so for example LV.1 elite is low B rank, whilst LV.20 elite is high B rank. They all nodded, it was news to Azawa too. Then there are night grade, a rank villains, the most powerful ones are the Leshies, the ugly wooden shadows. They all nodded, so she continued, then they are the elite night grade, they are low to mid S rank level in strength, and so far Izuku has 5 as you all seen at the beginning of the battle. Taking a deep breath, though, with their regeneration factor they can be near impossible to beat, so up them a grade or so. This caused All Might's eyes to widen. They level up constantly even if Izuku doesn't use them, the excess mana production level them up, but gradually. After a minute of silence, the five in the room then continued their conversation with Nezu starting. I may or may not know who the spy is. This made them all have eyes widened, knowing what they want to ask, Nezu continued, at the beginning of the finals, we told our students not to record anything or even bring their phones to the observation booth. They all nodded knowing that if any information leaked can cause the said student to have a harder time in the future, with that being said, one of our students brought out their phone to start recording. If I know what will happen, then we will be seeing the video of Izuku giving you two a beatdown shortly. The focused eye went all over them, I believe the spy may be. The next day they all were sitting in class, Izuku was looking out of the window thinking about yesterday. Flashback. When he came to his room he sent out all of the 44 winged angels and the 8 cherubs to look around Tokyo and its surrounding prefectures for the Nana woman. His plan was to leave those 48 shadows in Japan, looking for Tamura and his group, whilst also looking for Nana, they all have the mental image of her, so they were all set to go. They kept to the shadows most of the time so it they won't be found. He also found a skill that are more useful towards his job, skill. 
shared inventory, this allowed the shadows to put whatever they found in there, it could be the trash that can be turned to gold or something interesting. So whenever the shadows found something it would be added to his inventory. It did cost Izuku 1,500,000 gold, making his gold reserves be in his low thousands, but with what he is going to do tomorrow, it should be worth it. Currently, Izuku was laying down on his bed waiting for Rumi, after she knocked telling Izuku that she is coming in, even though he could have sensed her. She got into her nightwear when she came in and went to bed hugging him. I missed you, the talk went for far too long with Azawa making me and all my great other students. Hugging her back and pulling the covers over them, he just laughed at that, I missed you too bun bun. He pulled out a rune stone from his inventory and smiled, this is a late birthday present for you to be able to grow stronger and for me not to worry as much when you are away. This is a regeneration skill rune stone, it is more of a passive ability that can regrow your limbs. Izuku nodded and she took it and crushed it like she did last time, this also allows you to become faster and stronger, it can repair torn muscle to make you stronger and get rid of lactic acid faster than a natural body, she could feel the extra power almost instantly, some of her sour muscles are starting to loosen up. Even if Izuku didn't give her that she would still love him, she kinda felt like she was using him, but shook that thought out of her head. Thank you Izuku. I really appreciate it. She gave him a kiss which he reciprocated. The kiss deepened with the use of tongue, Rumi straddled herself over Izuku's chest with her lips meeting his in a passionate battle. Both of their hands are around their partner's bodies, this is how they fell asleep in each other's arms. Flash back end. In the morning she had to leave for her patrol, whilst Izuku got ready for the last day of school for the first term, he forgot to mention Nana to Rumi as she would worry too much. They have been promised a summer's camp if they passed, and with nine students in his class failing the final exam, he wondered what will happen. Now his observation was stopped when Heian tapped her finger on his shoulder from behind him. Turning back and smiling, sup, what you need. She came closer to his ear and whispered, can I talk with you and Maruko later on today? Not knowing that one earphone jack user was hearing it. Blinking, I don't know if Rumi will be back today, pretty sure she is coming back tomorrow to collect me why. Now it was her turn to blink, you going anywhere this summer? Izuku nodded, my dad is coming over this summer, and he is taking me to France, and Rumi was invited. Even though they were talking quietly Kitsumi could even hear that and her teeth greeted. Whilst Heian had an innocent smile on her face, yeah she was jealous. Though he continued, I island is in two weeks so I will be meeting y'all there, and the camp is in three weeks, so it's all good right, as you passed. She nodded, she wanted to talk but was stopped by Azawa who spoke up, that may be true, but we believe that if you are traveling, then you need someone who is a hero to protect you, recent developments tells me that you may be a target for some villain organizations. He had a pointed look to all of them, you may go back to your families this summer, but to those who are staying the training fields are open, and most teachers will be staying on campus. With that he opened his folder, firstly there were nine of you who failed. He could hear a lot of them groan in pain and remembering that, he then gave a pointed look at two students who gulped, Yuga, Achako don't look so pleased, you two nearly lost, and it due to 13 not being a real villain you are still alive. The both of them gulped at that. But the smile, all of you are going to the training camp, but those who failed will have remedia lessons during the trip. Now most of the students were happy hearing that. Sir you lied to us again, how may we trust you in the future? Let's be honest here, we all know who said it. He just rolled his eyes, then he handed out a short pamphlet to the front desk of each row, this here will tell you all what you will need, and the basic outline of the things we will be doing there. With that he nodded to all of them and finally said, in three weeks be here, we will be leaving at 7am. He had a smirk, it will be interesting, I still need to think what to do with Izuku. He could always improve his skills, but they usually involve fighting. Mashiro and Ijiro could fight his elite grade shadows, as no one bar Izuku could handle his night grade yet. It was true, only Izuku and Tenya had ultimate moves, but Tenya could only do it for 12 seconds, then he is out of juice. Individually they rank from D to B rank heroes, some of his students are high B, and could break the B rank barrier during the summer. Though thinking about Izuku's strength he just sweat dropped remembering the power difference. Fitting gates during the summer will be hard, I have one more week until the mystery key tells me where the mystery gate is located, and now the Akatsuki key, how can I not forget the last levels of heaven? Damn, if I play my cards right then I should finish all of the gates before summer. Izuku thought as he mindlessly looked over the pamphlet. I already have all of the items, and I can buy more from the shop. It is cheaper anyways. It was pretty funny too, he found out that he could sell 100 grams of trash for around 1 gold, so he occasionally sent out shadows to clean the Dagaba beach up, it was good that he invested in the shared inventory, as he occasionally sells all of the junk he had collected from his shadows being there. So far he collected around 100,500 kilograms, meaning 10,050,000 gold. 10 million gold in over 4 hours. 
He had all of his knights, six winged angels, bears, elves, the bison, and vampires all collecting it. Apparently not even one fourth was cleaned up yet. Boy nerd, why are you going to France? One ex-bully asked, once again getting Izuku out of his train of thugs. Oh yeah you didn't know, when dad comes from America he always takes me somewhere. Last year it was South Africa. She blinked, she did not know that. How could she as she was the one who bullied him most of the time? Though she was a little jealous that he will be going with Maruko. Mina then excitedly yelled, let's go to the mall, we can buy things we need. Hora nodded though no one could really see, although 1A understood her movements to see what she was doing, yeah, let's all go together. A 1A trip. Izuku then added as a thought, I do need to get something, so sure. I am in too. He and spoke with everyone in the class agreeing even Kitsumi and Shoko. Mall 30 minutes later. They all walked to the mall and then started to split up, Izuku was left with Hei in, Shoko and Kitsumi. Momo left with Kaioka, Denki and Hanta, whilst Ajiro went with Tenya, Achako and Mashiro. Do you need to go to any place in particular? Izuku asked the three girls. I need to get new hiking boots. Kitsumi grumbled, Izuku chuckled and patted her head, looking at the other two they nodded as they did in fact needed new gear. The four of them chatted with an occasional wave at a fan, which was mostly from people recognizing them from the sports festival. Entering a store, the three girls split up with Izuku going with Hei in to help what she may need, in all honesty Izuku looked like a lost puppy, as he didn't know what to do. I need to get a waterproof coat and some bug spray. Izuku nodded and they walked to the clothing section where Izuku had to wait patiently for her to pick up her coat. Though he did sense some kind of bloodlust coming from out of the store. Hey in, I will be back in a minute. I need to check something. She just nodded and Izuku left the store. Izuku saw the man who attacked the USJ and walked up to him, didn't think I would see you here tomorrow. The grey-haired older teen with a black hoodie on him just chuckled, me neither Izuku or should I say monarch. Shaking his head, you seem troubled, as much as I want to capture you, I can sense the Kurajiri is here with a group of Nomu that can attack any second. You have your shadows don't you? He gave a smirk towards Izuku. Sighing it will be a mess, and no one likes not being in control of the game. He saw a stand, want ice cream? He shook his head, I am getting you ice cream, you seem down. With that Izuku got two ice creams, both vanilla flavored, he handed one to Tamura, and the both sat down. Even though Izuku didn't see it, the older teen was happy, this was probably the first act of goodwill anyone especially a hero student done to him. Why? Izuku looked at him as he was stupid, so he continued, why are you being nice to me? A villain. You're still a human right? Whilst I may be your opponent in a game, out of the so-called game we could be friends. Izuku spoke in a wise old tone. Tamura started to lick the ice cream whilst having his pinky finger poking out, I was coming here to think. Want to share? Izuku asked after a couple of seconds. What did Stain have that I don't? The Hosu incident mostly forgot about us and concentrated on that damn Stain. The people who want to join my party only want that hero killer. He even made Izuku look around and saw some shops selling hero killer merchandise. Izuku realized what he meant, you seem to lack a purpose, Stain wanted to get rid of the fake heroes to make society better. You? From what the new show, you want to destroy, but you want to change the society too don't you? He just grunted, all might is what I want to destroy, any second now a villain could attack those sheep, and no one could do anything. They all became complicement in this time. It is true, Endeavor is nothing but a highest class at best, but all might was an international level hero. The difference between those two levels are like night and day. I prefer peace over war, it may be true that villain attacks can happen any moment, but it is better to not have your gourd up, than be Parandway 24-7. He sighed to himself, I would recommend you to leave, more of my classmates are calming. If you do anything to them though I will capture you or your sensei. He just laughed and waved his hand back, Shoko asked, who was that? Tamura Shigaraki. Before you ask why didn't I capture him, he pointed up to the upper floor, Kurajiri is there with a lot of the Nomu, he would release them if something happened to him. Then looking straight into her eye, one of the Nomu there was as powerful as Igris. This caused her to gulp, she knew that Igris was the most powerful and had a riverly with Baruka, but the one who could defiate it could be Izuku with the help of his elites. Though there would be casualties. We should call the police anyways. Heian said, which they did, the police asked them some questions, and were proud that Izuku didn't try to capture him, because he would have been breaking laws for quirk usage. Tsukauchi was the one who asked the four questions with a said question, are you a spy for the loja villains? They all said no, which was good for him to know. Azawa picked the four up, and the rest of the class had to go back to their dorms. Though he told Izuku that Nezu wanted to meet him. Nezu's office. Ah welcome Izuku, how are you feeling after today? The mouse thing asked. It could have been better Nezu, I am thinking that the League of Villains are planning on something as more criminals are joining their ranks. 
Izuku explained as he sat down on one of the couches. Nezu nodded, then sighed, the video of you fighting against Maruko and All Might was just leaked around an hour ago. Izuku blinked, that is why you had Azawa Sensei collect me because the media. The mouse god nodded, yes, if you noticed UA front gates are already flooded with reporters and some of your fans. Izuku face palmed. Though he could see Nezu smirk, also because of this move that our spy had created made a perfect opportunity for me to do something. Giving Nezu a curious look, he continued, you provisional license exam. Izuku had his eyes widened, he saw that it had his picture of him wearing a black hoodie with a white shirt. You could barely see the crescent moon of the side of the hoodie, he had a straight face with his hair having some curls on top, whilst the sides had a fading effect. Thank you but how sir? All Might, Maruko and myself have vouched for you to the HSPC with a lot of the public pushing it, they had no choice but to give it. They only said that you can get your full hero license during the time when the rest of your year will get it. A smile appeared on his face and he stood up with a bow towards Nezu, thank you Nezu. He just smiled, remember that you can use your quirk for emergencies mostly. Try not actively hunt for villains, but this will also help you if you get in a bind when you are traveling to France. Nodding, sure will, thanks. I will have to thank All Might and Rumi. The next day Izuku and Rumi met up with a man who was a little shorter than Izuku, but had black hair with some freckles on his face. He had a small gatee on his face and wore a casual suit. The two men chatted with Hisashi complimenting his good looks and congratulating him getting a girlfriend. Even though Izuku kept in contact with his father, he still wanted to compliment his only child. He also showed his dad his provisional hero license card which he was congratulated, and he also thanked Rumi. The three of them got onto a plane where they set out for France. Though getting through the airport was a pain when they saw Rumi and Izuku with an older version of Izuku. Shivers ran down all of their spines remembering that. So Mr. Midoriya. Rumi began but was stopped. Call me Hisashi from now on Rumi. He said with a gentle fatherly smile which caused Rumi to become happier, she never had a father figure in her life, but she would hopefully have one now. Thank you Hisashi, what are our plans in France? She asked as neither her or Izuku knew. Tuckling, we are going to Paris, I wanted you to explore the area, the Eiffel Tower and some museums. It is also one of the calmest cities in Europe, where villain attacks are rare, but are mainly caused by one person. They blinked, can you explain dad? Even though he left 48 shadows in Japan to continue to search for Nana, they can always travel back to Izuku in minutes, though going away from Izuku can take more time. He nodded, Paris is different to what you may have be used to like here in Japan or even USA. There is a villain called Hawk Moth who can manipulate people who are angry to become his villains. This got their attention even more, you should know firstly that having a hero license in France and some other European countries is harder to get than for instance Japan. This was the first time both of them heard about it, and it was fascinating, what Hawk Moth is using is not a quirk but a miraculous. Smirking, I can see your questioning glances so I will continue. The miraculous are more powerful than most quirks. The two most powerful ones are in the possession of the two heroes that are constantly fighting against Hawk Moth, they are called Ladybug and Cat Noir. The Ladybug and Cat Miraculous, the Creation and Destruction Miraculous. I am presuming that Hawk Moth want those two. Izuku asked, this was pretty interesting if he had anything to say about it. He nodded, he already has 16 of the 19 Miraculouses, Ladybug and Cat Noir accidentally trusted the wrong person who gave the 17 to Hawk Moth. Though they did get the Rabbit Miraculous back pretty quickly. The Sashi, if I may. How do you know all of this? Rumi asked as this was her first time hearing this, she was a top 10 hero from Japan damn it, to be exact number 6 just before Ed shot. She did want to be in the top 5 this year. I had to go to Paris a couple of times for my job, it is also on the news there, and it's pretty much not a secret. He said casually, though he didn't mention it as it is usually peaceful, and those attacks happen once a week. One of the reason France has a low villain attack rate was because if someone was because of their punishment. Whilst Japan had the villains go to prison with quirk cancelling cuffs, France did the same, but they would be also sent out to French Guiana to do work there. If someone used a quirk whilst not being in a quirk specialized park, then they would receive a fine of $2,000 minimum, so Hisashi was glad that Izuku has his provisional license. Izuku and Rumi just nodded to what Hisashi said to them, though he said, we also need to inform the inform the authorities about you two just in case. They just nodded glad. It was another 12 hours until they reached France, during the time all of them talked with Rumi giving an autograph to a little girl who was sitting near them. This melted Izuku's heart, yeah, she would be a great mother. France. English version, I don't care if they don't understand French. After the border patrol, the three of them had to go to the authorities about the two of them having a hero license. 
the police who actually was Roger Raincomprix, a large man who had some weight behind him and a friendly smile, was happy that at least for a week two heroes that are well known in Japan are here in Paris. It was no secret that Izuku defeated All Might as who wouldn't be, the strongest hero in the world defeated by this young man and his quirk during their exam. After a photo taken by Hisashi of the policeman and the two heroes they left to their hotel. They did get some glances but more of curiosity, as the group had their more casual attire on. After checking into their two-bedroom room, Hisashi told them that he will be getting some shut-eye as he was tired. Rumi had a regeneration skill which allowed her to have more energy whilst Izuku was Izuku. They got out of the hotel and went around to look around. This is nice place. Rumi said whilst holding Izuku's arm. He nodded at that, ooh ice cream. Want to get some? Sure. After getting to the bicycle ice cream stand the duo met Andre Glacier, a famous ice cream maker. It was a tradition to make a picture with their ice cream, and the man like was shown on his stand's roof. They both nearly moaned in the pleasures of the mouth that the ice cream gave them. This sure is delicious, thank you Adner. They also collected a photo each from this occasion and his it in their clothes. No problem at all, enjoy you too. He smiled as the duo waved goodbye to him. They were getting closer to the Eiffel Tower where they saw two figures jumping from roof to roof, is that ladybug in Cat Noir? Izuku asked seeing the two moving quickly. Yeah it is. I wonder what is happening. Patrol. It could be I guess. She wasn't sure, but they were underneath the metal tower looking at it. They got into the elevator to the highest floor and saw the view of Paris. This is beautiful. Sure is, except the black skyscraper it is all beautiful. She chuckled, yeah I see it. Not many people were in top floor of Eiffel Tower which the both of them were glad about, suddenly they saw a red horse with some kind of car resemblance that was giant in size jumping towards the Eiffel Tower. Oh shit. Izuku and Rumi muttered, with Rumi continuing, this must be one of the acumatized victims. Izuku nodded. Come forth, angels. The shadow angels came and got all of the people in the tower to safety, whilst Izuku jumped towards the villain, whose sword was about to cut the Eiffel Tower. Using skill. Dominator's touch, he punched the sword pushing the lady backwards. Who are you? The voice asked. Though the one that can see through her eyes was too curious, it was only Ladybug and Cat Noir who deals with the acumatized people. Smirking, I am Monarch and this here is Maruko, we are from Japan for some rest, but I guess we cannot rest now Hawk Moth. Izuku shouted. Ahaha, do you think you can defeat me? Then a couple of seconds later she spoke, this place is too old-fashioned, it needs to be changed for the new era. With that she tried jumping over Izuku who is on the floor. Not so far lady. Rumi shouted on top of the Eiffel Tower, Luna Fall. With that she kicked the head downwards breaking some of the floor. Izuku used his skill. Shadow manipulation to create binds around the large horsewoman thing. Though when she called out, split. Twelve smaller version of the woman appeared. Come forth. With that all elite knights and five leshy came out and chazzed the other ten, whilst Izuku and Rumi will deal with the two Rimyanning. It only took two minutes to have the twelve in one place captured with Dracula's shadow manipulation or Baruka's eyes. In all honesty it was easy, she could be ranked at mid-B rank, not even the exp collected would do good. Well well well. Looks like our job was done eh my lady. A catman otherwise known as Cat Noir said. She nodded, thanks for that, now we need to get the Akuma out of her. Eh? How do you do that miss? Izuku asked whilst Rumi face palmed, it was Ladybug and Cat Noir for fuck's sake. Cat Noir spoke, you must be from Japan right? He saw them nod, you are the two that came here on holiday from what Roger told us. We are. You must be Cat Noir and the lady is Ladybug right? Rumi asked. Yes we are, Cataclysm. With that a destructive power came into Cat Noir's right hand and touched the sword of the car horse Lady Thinji. Ladybug then used her yuyo to catch the dark Akuma, and after that she said, bye bye little butterfly. With that, she threw her lucky charm which was a map up in the sky, and the destruction was fixed. Wow, that was cool. Izuku said in awe looking at the small ladybugs fixing the damage and making the acumatized villain into a car that a blind lady came out of. Hey what happened? The lady asked. You were acumatized Cat Noir answered. How could I help it, they refused to let me demolish this. They make way for my future Technopole. You can build it somewhere else, Miss Tsurugi. She said it softly, can you check whether you have the mouse miraculous? It looks like a coin with a hole in it and has a chain through it. Hawk Moth must have gave it to you after you were acumatized. Cat Noir continued. I am sorry Car Noir, Ladybug, but I have no such item in my disposal. How did Hawk Moth do it then? Ladybug asked, still Rumi and Izuku just look like they don't belong there. So the duo just walked off wanting to spend time together. Though they did notice that the bug gave that lady some sort of pendant, then jumped away with the cat. Later on the day. The duo was with Hisashi at some kind of presentation. 
it was a ring that is called Alliance. The ring is similar to a phone which has a Adriana Greist and Lila Rossi, as the main speaker is similar to Siri, a map feature, calling features etc. Bringing us all together. Gabriel, Adrian's father finished off the presentation with all of the audience clapping. Then two people went on stage one being Lila the other Adrian, doesn't this Adrian person look like Karnoir? Izuku whispered to Rumi. He still couldn't help but blush seeing her in a formal dress. India, I wonder what will happen now. Izuku nodded to that. The trio then went to congratulate the two who created it with Izuku feeling some very small amount of bloodlust coming from Gabriel, but he ignored it. Welcome to France, Maruko, Monarch. The said man said in a respectful tone and a smile. Thank you sir, the innovation is amazing, especially using air for your projection. Izuku commented. The lady that they have saved before smiled and said, we are lucky to have someone who can use their quirk to build this projection. Without them this wouldn't be possible. Izuku and Rumi walked of a little further as Hisashi had some business talk to do with the two older people. Adrian and Lila walked up to the duo, hey, you must be Izuku and Rumi right? Monarch and Maruko. I am Lila Rossi. Hey I am Adrian Agrist. The blonde introduced himself. Hi yes, it is good to meet both of you. I am Izuku Midoriya, and she is Rumi Yasajiyama. He said it with a sweet but true smile that even caused Lila to blush. Rumi nodded, the ring is pretty amazing if I have to say anything, it can be used to save lives in a lot of the places, especially if you convert the acumatization to villain attacks. Izuku nodded to that, Lila then asked the duo, what about us four go somewhere to eat? I am sure we all are hungry. Izuku looked at Rumi who nodded, sure, I will just tell dad that we will be leaving. He went to his dad to talk about it, whilst Adrian was talking with Rumi and Lila. He didn't really like Lila, but for some reason she was actually bearable here. When Izuku came back the four of them left to go to a higher class restaurant and continued their conversation. They told them stories how it was in a hero school and vice versa. Adrian wasn't the best social butterfly all around, but he actually enjoyed it being with the two Japanese people. One who is a couple of months older than both himself and Lila and Rumi who is a little older than the three of them. He knew those two because he met them in his car noir form, he knew they were powerful, but it was good to have some help for at least a week. At the end of the night the four took a photo which Adrian had an actual smile, which could melt any women's heart bar roomies. Lila sent it to the trio as a reminder, and left to hopefully see each other in the near future. Lila, a usually manipulative woman who eventually gets what she wants, didn't use that persona. Her true self, a friendly true self. She could always find those two to hang out, also Izuku was hot for her. With Marinette. During the night she was fretting about seeing the news, Alia was talking about how two heroes from Japan that helped Ladybug and Cat Noir, due to them being on holiday. It may also be due to her seeing Adrian, Lila and the said two heroes on a picture that both Lila and Adrian both posted on their socials. She saw that Adrian's smile was true not forced, he was actually enjoying their time that he had spent with the three others. For the first time she didn't sense any manipulation coming from Lila which was worrying for her at least. She briefly heard something about Monarch and Maruko, but that was Carnoir's interest, so she started doing her own research about those two. Though when she heard the bell jingle from downstairs bakery, she sneaked down to see her parents, giving the two people she had in mind some baked good. Thank you very much sir. It is delicious. The teen said, the tall guy with green shadows on his hair. The carrot cake is simply amazing. The rabbit woman said, they both clearly went to a conference or a meeting as both of them wore formal clothing which she remembered Lila's and Andrian's post. I think it was a good idea for a nightly stroll. Definitely, the food is simply put astounding. Rumi agreed with him. With that the two left whilst Marinette just looked at them go. Her parents though were really happy seeing this cute couple together. Five minutes later. Marinette was waiting for her friend Alia to come back up with the tea. Though the she heard a window crushing down. Marinette. Hawk Moth asked bewildered. The Quemus nodded, she got a gift from Ladybug herself, she told us that her base is secretive, and gave Marinette a key. Which was truish to some extent, Sass the snake Kwame told him. She knew what to do as it was her plan that caused a lot of sleepless nights. After taking the key from her, he asked, do you know where she lives? Marinette shook her head, trying to explain that she had the mouse miraculous before, and that is how Ladybug gave her the ring. Alia came in that moment and dropped the tray seeing Hawk Moth and Marinette. He then pointed at her, you, you know where Ladybug is. He did recognize her from the Lady blog. No I don't, but now she will know where you are. Alia informed the both whilst pulling her phone out to make a live stream, listen up pips, mega scoop. Live from Marinette Dupain Cheng bedroom. Hawk Moth now that you have all of the miraculous, what do you think Ladybug is up to? Maybe she is moving her secret hideout or looking for a replacement or maybe she is already on your trail. Hawk Moth just growled at her, then took her phone and smashed it on the ground, hey bad sinkership. 
Now having the key, he broke the ladybug themed add in that showed 42 on it. Turning to the Kwamis he asked, what does this supposed to mean? After the chattering of the monkey Kwami, the pig Kwami told about the ice ring. The ice ring. With that he jumps away not noticing the other two blurs following him. When Hawk Moth entered to the ice ring he didn't expect to see Monarch and Maruko, wow, so this is the Hawk Moth I hear about. Rumi asked. Izuku just nodded, greetings Hawk Moth, I hear you have been causing trouble in the city whilst we were here on holiday. He just growled at the both of them, I don't have time for both of you. Izuku just smirked, using his skill. Dominator's force, he could only get one Merkulis due to how loose it was on the villain's body. Glasses, that apparently the horse Kwami resides in. Huh, those look pretty cool. Though he wished he could get others as he saw them not wanting to be with him. Alki had her eyes wide opened, just like that she was freed from Hawk Moth. I am sorry little one, we will give you back to Ladybug later okay? Thank you, just call me Kalki. Just say full gallop and my power are portals named Voyage. Cool, Kalki you ready? Izuku received a nod and he said, Kalki full gallop. With the fancy animation done, Izuku was transformed into a black body skin tight bodysuit with a horseshoe that can be a weapon too. He had whitish hair with green streaks running down it into a ponytail. Kalki likes to be with someone popular or famous, and who better than a rising hero in training. No, no, no you monarch. He started to run away when Maruko jumped in front of him and kicked him sideways, but during this time he used pollen sting effect paralyzing her. Damn, I can't move. Izuku TSK, come forth. Protect Rumi and capture Hulk Moth. He used the power of tricks with illusions, and then the mouse power to David. When Izuku thought he got him, he finally used Long to get out of there with a wind part of its power. He would have used Sass if he actually marked down the time. Bam, he got away. Come forth not all of his shadows rose up, follow him and catch him. If you can't, try getting other miraculouses. Don't destroy any buildings. With that he went to Rumi and used the power of teleportation Aka. Voyage to get her to the hotel. Dismount he then sighed and tried using healing on Rumi or anything. Hey Kalki do you know how to get rid of the freeze thing? The glasses turned into their camouflage mode, the shape turned into a circular shape, with the lens being dark like sunglasses. It will also reduce his sensory input as he could feel what is around him, his sense stat is 240 which allows him to feel around 2000 meters in diameter, but he could see like the biakugan by around 100 meters around him. Other senses were all good, so having those glasses can also limit his power, so it could also be fun to fight again. The horse spoke to him back, it is not simple Izuku, give it one hour, her hawk moth will take it down when he transforms back. Thanks bud, Ed you eat something. Alki nodded her head, I can eat anything sweet. With that Izuku produced one of the eclairs that he bought with Rumi earlier on. The two started to get to know each other whilst waiting for Rumi or the shadows, whoever came first. He did find out what was happening and asked some of his own questions, is Gabriel Agris talk moth. Even though they couldn't speak, she nodded. Thanks Kalki. I don't think I should say it to anyone though. Why though? She asked. My theory is that a dry and agrist is cat noir, so a father-son situation won't be beautiful. Realization came to Kalki's face. Then a shadow appeared kneeling next to Izuku, its hand was open, and showed two miraculouses that they managed to collect. Even if they could use the shared inventory, there were living being there too. The two that Dracula actually held was the mouse miraculous and a bracelet, the snack miraculous to be exact. Thanks Dracula. Did you catch Hulk Moth yet? He saw his shadow shake his head, did the magicians locate him? Another shake of his head, are the others still looking? He received a nod, thanks again. With that Dracula went away. He looked at the two, a pendant and a bracelet. He put them on and the two Kwamis jumped out, hey you guys, I hope both of you are good. The bracelet became silver around his arm, whilst the pendant became a green stone with a black string going through the middle. The duo nodded in thanks, the snake one hissed in its snake type of voice, thank you, you must be monarch. I am Sass. I am Mullo. The mouse Kwami squicked out. Sup Sass, Mullo. Just call me Izuku okay? The two nodded, Kalki is here too if you want to hang out, I will be looking for Ladybug and Cat Noir to give them back to them. He also handed them some food so they became happier now, as Hulk Moth only gave them their bare minimum. Though what he didn't know was that Marinette formed a trap in a museum for the said individual. Though it didn't work properly, Hawk Moth escaped from them with his hand being used by Cat Noir's cataclysm. That was the moment the shadows took the two miraculouses. Even though he was weakened he still outsmarked the shadows as he knew Paris better than them. Though both Cat Noir and Ladybug saw that he was missing a miraculous beforehand. Two days later. After the hour Rumi unfroze and she wanted to smash the head of Hawk Moth, but she was calmed down pretty quickly. She somehow befriended Mullo, the mouse miraculous, and even the Kwame asked if she could wear her pendant. 
Sass, Kalki and Izuku got on pretty well actually too. There was no temptation sensed by Sass, but curiosity, he allowed Izuku to try using his power. He said it was useful, but not something he would use often, if you get him. Sass was happy about that, his power can be more dangerous than Tikis or Plagues if used right, and knowing that Izuku was responsible and strong was a boon for him. They tried looking for both Ladybug or Cat Noir, but neither found them. The two humans agreed that they will look out for them, but it was their holiday in all honesty. Though the Kwamis were happy being with them. Hopefully the three Kwamis could convince Ladybug for them to stay with the duo. The night was coming soon, and Izuku decided to recreate one of his first dates with Rumi. He bought some sweet things from the Tom and Sabine Belangerie Patisserie Bakery, he asked his dad if he could get a bottle of wine, and with that he got some cheese. As an addition he also got some carrots and carrot cake, as who doesn't love carrot cake? The sun was setting, and Izuku and Rumi decided to get onto a roof where they saw the sunset behind the Eiffel Tower, the lights of the tower began to shine, creating a breathtaking view. Izuku produced the basket with some glasses and plates, Rumi quirked an eyebrow picnic. Though she smirked seeing the wine. Yeah, I wanted to recreate it one of our first outings. He smiled lightly looking at his girlfriend. I also have carrot cake. He laughed when some drool came out of her mouth. Rumi took the bottle of wine and poured some to both her and Izuku. She knew that Izuku couldn't publicly drink alcohol, but fuck it, she could say it was grape juice. Rising their glasses together, they clanked them with each other and took a sip. Alarm. Poisonous substances are detected, clearing in 3. 2. 1. Substances are clean from any poisons. Am, forgot that I cannot get drunk. Izuku chuckled which Rumi laughed too. Izuku was happy, if he could say more he would but the view of Rumi laughing with the setting sun, and he long white hair being blown behind her with a light breeze. It was breathtaking, dazzling. This caused some blush to appear on her. She saw how Izuku was looking at her, lovingly. With that word being said she could die happily, but who would keep Izuku in check? Thanks Izuku. With that she leaned in and kissed Izuku in the lips. After that they continued to drink and eat what Izuku prepared. Next day. It was the fourth day of their visit when Izuku and Rumi found the hero duo. Finally we found you. Izuku said, even though his shadows looked for Hokmoth, they couldn't trace him back. The both Japanese heroes jumped on a roof where the two heroes were. The three Quemus came out and came to Ladybug and Cat Noir, it seems that you actually managed to get some miraculouses from Hawk Moth. Cat Noir complimented. Izuku gave a deadpan expression, it was actually pretty simple taking them if you are not using that miraculous at that moment. Which caused Rumi to laugh. Anyways, we have three of them. And when Izuku and Rumi were beginning to take them off, something unexpected happened. No. The three Quemus shouted, causing Rumi and Izuku to stop what they were doing entirely. Molo continued, Ladybug, Cat Noir. Can we stay with Izuku and Rumi please? It was the first seeing the defeat show leader Sass and a pridful horse Kalki use their puppy eye no jutsu towards Ladybug and Cat Noir. The two mentioned heroes were shocked, who wouldn't be, Ladybug asked the question, why though? I mean I understand why you want to stay, but they will be traveling back to Japan soon. Kalki answered the question, Izuku could always teleport here with my power to help you too. Izuku thought for a second, I can do that, but it's Ladybug's and Karnwar's decision little ones. He said with a small smile. Sass continued, you also have less Merkulis to collect don't you? It will be easier as my and Kalki's powers can cause the most trouble. Hatmar added some of his points, he is not wrong. Voyage is one anning power if you think about it. The horse Kwame Kinda growled. Sighing, Ladybug answered, fine, you three can stay with Izuku and Rumi. Rumi smiled as she patted Molo on the head, it's going to be fun Molo. Betting a piece of paper out of his pocket Izuku wrote his number down, then gave it to Cat Noir, this is my phone number, call me, and I should come here as fast as I could, or I can send a shadow to help you I am busy. Izuku smiled at them, Cat Noir gave a grateful grin. We got 6, 14 more to go. Ladybug informed, I will inform Roger about the developments other than that, bug out. With that the lady jumped away. Cat Noir stayed because Izuku asked for, hey Cat Noir, I hate to ask, but are you Adrian Agrist? This made the cat stop on its tracks. The shocked look gave the duo their answer, don't worry we won't tell anyone about it. Izuku smiled at him. Some heroes don't want their identities known like All Might, so don't worry our mouths are shut as we suspect Ladybug doesn't know about you. He sighed and made the duo follow him to a rooftop looking over the Eiffel Tower, I am, how did you find out? They just stared at him, then looked at the closest Adrian Agrist ad, then looked back at him, with Adrian sweat dropping, it was pretty easy here. Both sweat dropping answered, yeah, don't worry. Anyways want to hang out in your civilian form? Izuku asked, as he wanted to be shown around Paris more. This was their fourth day in Paris anyways, and they actually enjoyed it very much. 
They occasionally saw some heroes, but they were more local and not as well known like for instance Ladybug and Cat Noir. Sure, would love to actually. With that they started to hang out, and supercently Adrian didn't become a third wheel that day. Though what they didn't know was that Ladybug actually came back 30 minutes later to look for Cat Noir to see Izuku, Rumi and Adrian skating around a plaza near Eiffel Tower. End of the visit. They were going back now, Adrian and Lila were there to say goodbye to the both of them and Izuku also gave his number to them if they wanted to contact him. Though he had to play it because Adrian already has his in his cat noir form. An actual international friendship was made in France, though Izuku and Rumi would have loved to know who was Ladybug's true self, but beggars can't be choosers as they say. Izuku arrived in Japan and he had to meet All Might, this was his recompensation. He gave his first place winning tickets to Hei in and Katsumi, as Shoko got hers from her father, though she is traveling with Shoto. Rumi couldn't really travel as she had a job to do, though they did say goodbye to her and Molo. Sass and Kalki were pretty excited, during their long lives they didn't actually travel that much, especially when Tiki accidentally quirks, good days. Though they did say to the two humans to use them as the last resort, so no one could suspect them. Izuku also told the three with Rumi about the gates and how he gets the shadows, they were surprisingly alright with them two killing those monsters. Now All Might and Izuku were traveling to I Island with Izuku needing to ask one question, Tashinori, who is Nana? If he could, then All Might would cough out blood. How do you know her? His tone was a no shit tone type. Izuku looked straight into All Might's eyes, though his glasses blocked it. When I did the domain expansion on you, I met her and six others. All Might had his eyes wide open, she told me that her body is still alive but doesn't know where. All Might stood up looking paniste, how, where? We need to go back. Trying to calm Tashinori down, I don't know what exactly your quirk is, but I am sure it is something to do with it. Rest assured I have some of my shadows looking over Japan for her. The speed that All Might went to Izuku was worrying as he wasn't in his buff form. Though his mini form began to regain some muscle and fat. Tokyo is mostly cleared, they are spreading around its surrounding prefectures. I am worried that she is somewhere hard to access, like bunkers or hidden layers. Even if I deploy all of my shadows it could take months to find her. The man sighed, thank you Izuku. She was my mentor and one of the reasons why I have my quirk. Izuku nodded to that and they went into some kind of silence until they arrived. All Might wanted Mirio to come with him at first, but his successor had his internships with Sir Night Eye, he could control 30% of all for one at that moment which was actually pretty good. I Island. All Might and Izuku both wore their hero suits with Izuku's only addition was his darkened glasses and the silver bracelet on his left arm. When people started to recognize the both of them they began crowding them, although Izuku just used his superior speed with the skill. Sprint to leave All Might with the reporters. He went a little further waiting All Might, so he started to chatter with Sass and Kalki, who were both in awe at the quirk usage and the quirk-based showings all around. Suddenly, Izuku heard someone was approaching him, both Quemus hid in Izuku's jacket pocket. Turning to the left he saw a large woman, she was 10 centimeters taller than himself, and had more muscle than himself. He won't lie, she looked beautiful, and he was pretty sure her age is 31 if he remembered right. It's up there. She said in a cheerful voice, one of the most powerful heroes just said that in her casual wear. Hey, you must be Star and Stripe. Izuku gave her his fist to fist bump, whilst he stood up. She smiled and fist bumped him back, and you are the new kid that is causing waves around the world. Monarch right. I didn't know my reputation precedes me, but just call me Izuku. Sure, call me Kathleen then Izuku. He gave a nod back to her, you waiting for someone. He pointed to a crowd, All Might and I just arrived, I barely escaped from the reporters and fans. He chuckled nervously. What about you? She sighed and spoke same here actually, I also escaped my body gourds, even though I don't need any. Izuku just smirked, I bet, want to leave them. I heard there are some competitions, wanna play. He knew that top-rated heroes have a competitive streak. She smirked back, you're on. With that the two left All Might in his own suffering. It only took another 30 minutes when he escaped from the fans and wondered where Izuku was. But America's number one in Izuku. The first place where they entered had some kind of hill with robots on it, a robot destruction game huh? Izuku muttered, but it was clearly hurt by Kathleen. Look at that two new competitors, Kathleen Bate and Izuku Midoriya. The announcer said through her microphone. This got a certain group's attention. Ladies first. Izuku Mok bowed. She smirked, thanks, but I will win this. Ready, set, go. There were seven robots on the hill, with her enhanced body from her quirk new order, she jumped from one to one with an occasional air punch breaking three robots. With that she finished, and look at that ladies and gentlemen, a new record of 1.45 seconds. The announcer had her eyes widened at this. She walked back with a smirk, good luck. 
but Izuku just smirked back at her. Be ready. Izuku nodded while summoning his spear, ready, set, go he used skill. Spear throw, skill. Sprint and lastly skill. Dominator's touch. The spear pierced the very top robot, whilst he ran up to the lower one destroying it with his leg, and with the final skill destroyed the five others by crushing them. He then had his spear come back to his hand, then disummoned it. The announcer had her eyes wide open once again, and look at that, we have a tie, 1.45 seconds once again between Kathleen Bate Aka Star and Stripe and Izuku Midoriya Aka Monarch. Damn, I hoped I'd won. Izuku chuckled whilst walking up to Kathleen. She shook her head, I knew you were strong, but damn, I know though you didn't go full out. They both started to walk out of the stadium. Neither were you. He chuckled at that, you could have destroyed the whole hill in one go in less than a second. The wider smirk appeared on her face, you could too. A proper punch of yours or your shadows and boom, less than a second. They just fist bumped at the end of the interaction and continued to their next destination. But the mention group just before Kathleen's turn. Isn't that Izuku? Kayoka asked whilst pointing her jack to Izuku who was standing with an older woman near the entrance to the competition. Momo had her eyes widen, isn't that star and stripe next to him? She was a big fan of hers, not many heroines actually make it to the top 10, there are two currently in Japan, no.6 Maruko and no.9 Ryukyu. So seeing one who is the number one in their country is one of the best things. Then you commented, I wonder how they he wanted to ask how they met, but couldn't finish as in a mere second the robots were destroyed, 1.45 seconds, the group of 1A students had their mouths wide open, and it continued to grow when Izuku completed his turn with the same time. They knew that Izuku was strong, just look at the fight between him against Maruko and All Might. Damn it, the nerd is getting away. Kitsumi growled out, though she was stopped by Ajiro and Tenya for some reason. Isn't it your turn Kitsumi? Tenya asked. Yeah getting a score of 13.29 seconds compared to the two powerhouses was kinda awkward. But Kathleen and Izuku. 28 draws, 5 wins and 5 losses. Izuku muttered. It was fun don't get him wrong, but 38 games and most of them were draws, how? His luck skill must be acting up he decided. Aha, uh -huh, I still can't believe those five losses. How the hell could I have not beaten you in the burger eating competition? She said in a playful tone. Though she had a hidden frown remembering what the American government wanted her to do. It wasn't that she didn't want to do it, heck spending time with him was actually fun as she could experience him riverly. Flashback. Kathleen was in front of the American Hero Association president, the president of America, and two higher ups that she didn't really care remembering their names. It was a couple of days before she met Izuku. So why am I here? She asked curiously, it was not every day that she was called upon to a meeting with two very important people. The president of the Hero Association started, I am sure you are aware that Izuku Midoriya otherwise known as Monarch from Japan. He had beaten All Might who had the number 6 Hero Maruko helping him fight against Monarch. It was recorded by a phone first, but Nezu the UA principal released the full video a couple days later. She nodded, his quirk is weird, the shadows of his seem extremely useful. I am sure I can win against him, but his shadows could pose a problem. The four others nodded, with the president of USA speaking, as you are aware, USA has two national level heroes, you and Thomas Andre the number two hero. She did frown hearing that name, he was a decent dude in her books, but he didn't even hold a candle to her, he is one of the weakest national level heroes in the world. Though he continued, this makes us one of the most protected countries in the world. This was true, any major villains were snuffed out pretty easily by her or Thomas Andre. One of the two random people continued, from our reports we know that with every battle he improves. Kathleen gave a curious eye towards the random person, who continued speaking, during and after every fight his attributes increase, Endeavor reported that during the recommendation exams, his aura told him he was like an A rank hero. During the sports festival, his aura was around S rank level which Hosu was near a high S rank. We theorize that he kinda levels up. The shadow army that he commands also grows in numbers every time he uses it, the Japan's Hosu incident shows that he had mostly angel and knight based shadows with some other kind of monsters kinds, but in the fight you saw monsters from mythologies and legends. It was clear to see if you knew Eastern European myths and legends, vampires and leshi, were probably the most well known. The last mysterious person continued, his shadows also increase, how? We don't know yet. But that is where you come in. Monarch should be coming to I-Island for the I-Expo in a couple of days after he comes back from France. The four also know that Monarch and Maruko are only a call away to help France, especially Ladybug and Cat Noir, to help them if a need arises. Now the President of the United States of America finished for that person, we want you to convince him to become an American hero, or at least study in America like All Might did. Kathleen thought for a while, I understand everything but one thing, why do you want him to be here? 
The hero president said with a sigh, Norma Selner, you remember her. The American number one hero nodded, she is the lady with the fortune telling quirk right. The hero president who is actually a lookalike squid with small tentacles coming out of his lips, continued, she predicts that soon a massive catastrophe will occur in the western part of America, and we need as many strong heroes to combat it or America will be no more. I will meet up with him, I will ask him for an internship first. She needed to see if he is up to her standards firstly, she never had a student before, and her job with her bros usually demanded that if anyone wanted to be her sidekick to know how to fly a fighter jet or stand on one. Flash back end. America would be good for him actually, there are more villains there than in Japan, who has a 4% crime to 100,000, whilst America has 18%. More help would be needed to lower it down furthermore, and if Norma said is correct more help would be needed. She got out of her thoughts as Izuku was calling her name. Athleen just smiled and continued spending her time not caring about her bodyguards looking for her or even All Might, who left with Melissa who was too confused where All Might's guest is. The duo went to the showcase of the newest technology, he thought the alliance ring would be here, but nope. Kathleen was interested in the new fighter jets presented, you interested? Izuku asked as he was curious about those fighter jets too. They could fly. Swim. Underwater too and had pretty good maneuverability. Yeah, my team usually uses fighter jets to get to places quicker. Izuku nodded at the logic. They continued looking around until the night came over the island. They got dinner and promised each other to meet in the central tower for the scientist conference. In Izuku's room. What a fun day. Izuku muttered with a smile, then he looked at Sass and Kalki, how was it for the both of you? The both of them left to explore the island. It was fun, we even saw a denouser. Kalki explained. Tuckling, that is good. Anyways if you are hungry food is on the table otherwise good night Kalki, Sass. It was the next day where Izuku actually met David Shield and Melissa, he apologized to them as he hanged out with Star and Stripe which he gave some photos for proof. David thanked him for healing All Might privately, and then Melissa showed him her study area. It was actually fun talking to Melissa, and when she showed Izuku her room he was impressed by the devices she made. I don't want to judge but, do you have an intelligence quirk? He was curious about it, like using fucking nano insects to heal up scars that was impressive. She may not have a hero brain like Nezu who can deal with investigations, planned raids or politics, but Melissa had a lot of creativity. She shook her head, I am actually quirkless, I wanted to be a hero actually when I was younger. She expected him to laugh at her or feel sorry for her, but what Izuku did next just surprised her. He blinked, and power may help you, but quirks are not everything. I can proudly say that you are more of a hero than me, just look at those inventions that you made. You can help more people than I can in my career. He said that not noticing her blush on her face. Though he continued, becoming a hero without a quirk would be hard, I must admit that, but you could always use support equipment and a fighting style to defeat the bad guys. He supported her dream, even if it was kind of not a thing that much as she wants to become better than her father. However she needed to hear those words from another person who isn't her father. Thanks Suzuku. She hugged him with a lone tear coming out of her eyes, Izuku just hugged back. They stayed at that position for a minute or so until Melissa pulled back. After that heartfelt moment the two continued to discuss, with Izuku actually pointing out ways how she could always improve. They left each other for the actual I expo promising to meet each other there. Outside Central Tower. A tall tower that has 200 floors that are all different sizes, from a conference floor to a botanical garden. Izuku was waiting outside for Kathleen, he promised that he will meet with the rest of 1A inside, after he met up with Kathleen. Now he was wearing a black suit with a white shirt, he still had the silver bracelet and black sunglasses. In a distance he saw the number one hero of America in her hero suit. Izuku could have worn his, but he wanted to look proper. Looking good Kathleen. Izuku complimented. Thanks, you don't look bad yourself. She replied as they both chatted off whilst walking inside. When All Might began to talk up on the stage, Izuku pulled Kathleen to the side hidden. She gave a confused look, but Izuku put his finger on his lips. Couple of seconds later, she understood why. Villains. A man named Wolfram looked around and shouted, where the hell is Star and Stripe and Monarch? Capture them or our plan is null and void. The orders came clear, his underlings started to run whilst the other heroes were in a bind. Luckily Izuku used his skill. Stealth to hide both Kathleen and himself. Getting away was simpler said than done, Izuku could hear Wolfram say in his earpiece that if anything happened to them down below to use the police robots to kill the inhabitants of the island. He had 306 shadows compared to his usual 354. Sorry Kalki, but I need to use your power to get out of here. Whispering Kalki, full gallop. With that Kathleen saw Izuku in some kind of skin type body suite, she couldn't help but let her eyes wander on his chest, but she looked curious at him. He just smiled, voyage. 
With that the two jumped in, they were located under the windmills currently. Kalki dismount. But that he returned to his original suited look, he secretly gave Kalki some food as it was needed. What was that? She couldn't help but ask. It was a teleportation circle. She just gave a deadpan expression at that. You know we could have defeated those guys underneath right? She asked. Izuku nodded, we could easily, but there were some inconsistencies. First the Wolfram person had more than one quirk for sure. This had her eyes wide open, secondly, if anything would have happened to them, then the police bots would have started targeting the civilians and the scientists. Damn, we need to go to the control room. It should be on one of the top floors, but why would they attack High Island? Star and Stripe had her eyes wide open in realization, they want something. But before she could have continued some kind of Miss Lee came rushing to them and punched Izuku's guard. Making him back away further. Be strong. Some kind of Nomu said, he had darker skin than Beast had originally. The muscles of its body were bulging and had three faces around its head. The brain wasn't even visible to be seen, and the forearms it had was concerning too. The name above was dark red. Hi and Nomu. Ahamato. I will deal with this, you get to the control room. Izuku commanded as he stood up. Are you sure? She asked a little worried for her friend. Yeah, I need to kick some ass as my holiday was cut short. She just shook her head whilst jumping up. You're Ahamato I guess. The three mouths formed a smirk that looked creepy, you will die. With that the two rushed towards each other. The first punch caused massive gusts of wind to form around, with that a punching fest, though going against forearms was harder said than done. Gritting his teeth he jumped back seeing that his health dropped down by 750 HP. HP. 27,250 28,000. Hum forth. All but elite night stay, protect the civilians and evacuate the surrounding areas. If any robots cause trouble destroy them. With that his army jumped into action. But 1A and Melissa. They were about to walk into the conference room when a lockdown occurred. All being confused they went above the conference room trying to see what was happening and saw all heroes tied up, but couldn't see Izuku nor Kathleen. They did see All Might tied up on the stage, somehow they received word from All Might telling what was happening, villains attacked, they took David and Sam to get a device. Izuku and Star and Stripe were here but I presume they escaped somehow. Though they heard fighting above and all around them with the building even starting to shake. Wolfram then laughed, haha, ha, that high-end Nomu is dealing with Monarch. He will fall today, it is said that the high end could even beat All Might. Eyes widening of what Wolfram said, he wanted to make a show out of it, a live recording was seen of Izuku releasing his shadows all around, with only five of them staying to help him. It was known that the USJ was attacked by an upper tier Nomu, this is going to be different. All of class 1A began to worry about Izuku, they saw Izuku falling of the roof, but he jumped back up. Even though they wanted to help, they couldn't move at all. The power the two released caused them all to not be able to move. But Izuku. After he was punched off the roof, he used the skill. Dominator's touch to get back on the roof. Dracula tried using his cloak to protect him against the punches, but its strength was greater than S rank level. Baruka and Igris both tried double teaming against Ahamato. Using one of its mouths it produced some kind of mist that dissolved Baruka down to its shadow, it took some mana to get him up and back into the fight, but Igris was struck by its elongated hand, stabbing it into his chest. Izuku quickly used skill. Spear throw on its chest, but the spear went through it, and Ahamato instantly regenerated. He could tell that Kathleen dealt with the control room freeing all of the hostages, but still made the announcement for everyone to stay in their houses as a villain was attacking. Luckily the shadows helped the people evacuate and prevented some debris hitting some of the humans. Down below where All Might was, he quickly knocked out the villains including Wolfram out. He wasn't lucky with escaping as all of the exits were blocked. So he decided to watch, but just in case he will destroy part of the central tower to help Izuku. The Nomu with its two elongated arms swang recklessly destroying some of the building. Once again using skill. Dominator's touch he flew the debris back to Ahamato, though with the same mouth it produced the gas again liquefying the stones. Izuku tried the skill. Bloodlust but the enemy was too high level to be affected by that. Cursing he used skill. Sprint to stab him with his dagger with a skill. Vital strike. The head was a good target, but the Nomu just dogged and punched Izuku on the side of his ribs, smashing him to the lifts. Fisher and Raphael did a joint attack with water and electricity but Ahamato just smirked, another mouth of its three faces opened, and produced a massive force of wind blowing the water away. This allowed Dracula to stab the Nomu, but got punched back again from the Nomu, it wasn't a big stab, but took away 60 MP to regenerate. When Izuku saw that the Nomu began to fly he had an idea, guys, occupy the Nomu for some time. I have an idea. The five nodded with it they started attacking once again. They didn't know what the final mouth could do so they prepared for anything. 
Raphael had this battle as he was the best winged soldier in Izuku's army. Igris tried using Dominator Touch to help Raphael, but slowly the shadows were being pushed back. Some of Izuku's other shadows came up and started showering Ahamado with long-range attacks, heck even the castle-dwelling vampires used their illusions to slow him down. The seductive sinning vampires, the second strongest group of vampires if you ignore Dracula, used their immense strength to try to punch him, all to nod as they were turned to shadow from the poisonous mist attack. Izuku smirked, he remembered what the Nana woman said about their powers coming to Izuku. Alarm. New skill has been discovered. Skill. Float LV.1, active. Being able to fly in the air, even with slow maneuverability if leveled up it will become flight. 5 MP per second of use. Discovered he. This must be what Nana told me. I was originally gonna buy something similar. He then jumped and started to fly up in the air, oi big guy here. One of the drones started to record the fighting by now, and the commentator is saying what was happening, it seems the villain named Wolfram partnered up with the League of Villains. What we are currently seeing is a provisional hero from Japan named Monarch, who recently won against All Might the number one hero of Japan, and Maruko the number six hero of Japan. Star and Stripe the number one hero of America is dealing with the remaining villains who control the tower, whilst All Might dealt with Wolfram himself. Then taking a breath the woman continued, Monarch's shadow army is protecting the civilians who are going to bunkers. The five strongest shadows of Monarch's army are dealing with the Nomu, whilst Monarch is flying. Ahamado started to fly up towards Izuku who just smirked, using skill. Dominator's touch he pulled himself out of harm's way of the Nomu. How do I kill it? Fire possibly. That gave Izuku an idea, seeing that Ahamado is above him, he produced 20 fireballs with the skill. Fireball and shot them like missiles towards the Nomu who dodged that attack. Skill. Fireball leveled up from LV.5 to LV.6. With the use of 30 MP you can use fireballs to attack. It can deal a maximum of 1000 HP damage. But it evolves soon. He saw that the regeneration of its body was slower than with normal attacks. Raphael shot light arrows piercing one of its arms, whilst the rest were dodged. Izuku was lucky though that three of the fireballs hit the target, but he hated those regeneration factors now. Continuing to use float, he used skill. Dominator's touch to come closer to the Nomu, but finally the third mouth opened up shooting spikes out of it. The cape that Izuku wore protected him from all of them, whilst using his agility to dodge the rest. He used all of his power to punch the Nomu's arm that was coming closer, and so another close-up fight began. Star and Stripe had finally finished taking care of all of the villains, and saw what was happening outside with Izuku. She knew that he was strong, but that Nomu could fight against a low national level hero. So she decided to join in the fun by surprising the monster from the top, though what she did not expect it to open its first mouth producing some type of gas. Not knowing what it was she continued forward, but Izuku pushed her away and she saw why. Izuku's arms were hissing as the gas tried to decompose his arms, her eyes widened at that, just like with Maruko, she had to worry about everyone before herself, so being worried about was something new, but anger came over her towards the Nomu. The next moment Izuku drank a potion of some kind, and it allowed his hands to heal right up. Damn, that hurts like a bitch, I am lucky to have some pain nullification. Then he turned to Kathleen with a smile, next time please be careful, it can produce poison that instant kills my shadows, produce winds and shoot projectiles. She just dumbly nodded, Kathleen knew that she didn't have Izuku's regenerative properties, and was glad that he saved her, but pissed at the Nomu. Let's kill that bastard Izuku. She shouted out. Couldn't have said it better myself. And now a 3v1, with Kathleen, Izuku and Raphael trying to kill the Nomu whilst the Nomu was trying to kill the three of them. The students of 1A tried to do something, anything but they were stopped by All Might. Hekatsumi nearly exploded the man to help Izuku, but with All Might saying, you all will be hindrances to Izuku and Star and Stripe, this got them all to shut up. Even though they hated it, they had to watch and see, they couldn't see the movement speed of the four anymore, heck even All Might had trouble seeing Izuku and the Nomu. This news feed was presented to all of USA and some other platforms where people could watch. Over 30 million people are watching this currently, and the numbers are growing rapidly. One of the reasons was due to Island being more of an English-speaking nation, and usually under American protection. Secondly, Star and Stripe usually gives a lot of views, so having three national-level heroes even if one of them is being lazy was something interesting. Using his skill. Shadow manipulation he formed a bow and arrow and shot it to the Nomu, it hit, and it started to wrap around its body whilst Kathleen said, Izuku Midoriya's skills will be amplified to its limits. With this simple command for her new order quirk, Izuku felt stronger. Quickly seeing his stats he realized that it just added plus 200 points to all of his stats. He knew that he cannot have limits as it did increase by the same amount. When she finished that, the power of Izuku doubled over nearly causing Kathleen on her knees. 
The aura was felt by all around, from the best sensors to people with no sensing abilities. Thanks Kathy. He said with a smile and with greater speeds he punched its head off, he infused his punch with a skill. Fireball. This allows a small fireball to cover the top of his knuckles, and with the punch the face exploded. After the dust cleared it was shown it had two faces. Damn, two more lives I guess. He heard some cheers around him, but ignored it for the greater goal. But the smile to Kathleen, he used skill. Sprint to enter new rounds of the speed district, obliterating the body of the Nomu to pieces. With another fireball infused punch to its face Ahamado lost another one of its faces. Alarm. High end Nomu. Ahamado is using the skill. Storage. But shot out of its body were eight low tier Nomu, six mid tier Nomu and one upper tier Nomu. Izuku ignored them knowing that the 15 Nomus will be dealt by his soldiers. Igris and Baruka were becoming anxious anyways. He saw that the boost was over, and now he and Kathleen had to deal with one of its faces. So what now? She just smirked, watch and learn. If Ahamada moves a muscle, its face will explode. The Zuku just deadpanned, you could have finished the fight instantly. But the next thing shocked Kathleen, the Nomu wasn't affected by her quirk. Sighing, guess it's the old-fashioned way of a punch to the face heh. Betting out of the shock, definitely. Though she questioned to herself, was his name not Ahamado, or was it actually something else before being a Nomu? With that she had to dodge the sharp slices of winds that were getting closer to the two. The slices of wind hit a nearby building that Igris had to use his dominator's touch to hold it steady, while some of Izuku's shadows evacuated the people inside. Talking about the shadows, all of the alchemists were above Ahamada ready to pounce. Using a suicidal nose dive into the Nomu, it defended with punches and slashes, with Star and Stripe coming behind it and punching the upper body towards Izuku, who used the fireball punch destroying its last mouth. They thought that they defeated the Nomu, how wrong. Haha, ha, you are strong. But I am stronger. But that a massive explosion occurred nearly point blank for Izuku. Izuku. Kathleen shouted in worry, though you could hear that she was scared for his safety. The people held their breath as this explosion that was above the sea and not the island was as big as one third of the island. Haha, ha, come out of there. You are not hiding anymore. Izuku shouted towards the smoke, making everyone had their eyes widen. What came out were projectiles that Izuku dodged expertly. Did Izuku become stronger from the fight? So this is what they meant the speed was faster by a little, how could it now? Izuku's skills did improve during that part of the battle, and gained a level by his shadows defeating the Nomus. You leveled up. Level. 117. Fatigue. 72. HP. 9240 28240. MP. 11835 29490. Skill. Float leveled up from LV.1 to LV.2. Skill. Fireball leveled from LV.6 to LV.7. Skill. Dominators touch leveled up from LV.4 to LV.5. A minimum boost but that was needed, Izuku punched an ugly creature upwards. With his will, his speed increased flying upwards with Ahamado head on his hands. He was constantly putting the skill. Fireball to its limits trying to evaporate the head of completely. Damn it, more. The whole eye island could see a golden blur going upwards with a Nomu. Fire stream. He discovered that if he added some of his MP to some of his skills that he can pseudo-upgrade them like with his domain expansion or the fire stream. There was one problem though, this technique required 7500 MP from Izuku. High end Nomu. Ahamado has been defeated. But that notification a smile appeared on Izuku's face, with that he was heading head first towards the ocean. The people watching were shouting for Star and Stripes to catch Izuku. Though Kathleen saw that Raphael wanted to catch him instead of her, yeah she had none of that. With that she used both of her new order wishes and caught him in her arms, cradling him more than a friend should. Though she did hear him saying, thank you. Before passing out as his fatigue was 100. Later. Izuku woke up from his resting place which was the Eye Island hospital room. He saw that it was Wednesday, the day after the attack. A small smile came on his face remembering how he and Kathleen beaten the Nomu. Though he saw a shit tone of notifications. High end Nomu. Ahamado has been defeated. You leveled up. You leveled up. You leveled up. You leveled up. Skill. Fireball leveled up from LV.7 to LV.8, active. But the use of 10 Paiu can use fireballs to attack. It can deal a maximum of 1500 HP damage. Skill. Elemental resistance leveled up from LV.2 to LV.3, passive. The ability to be protected from different elements, as a side effect of this skill is the gaining of resistance to extreme temperatures. The range is minus 70 C to 1000 C. Shadow army leveled up, some shadows need to be graded up. Nomu type shadows names have changed. Normal grade Nomus are low tier. Elite grade Nomus are mid tier. 
Night grade nomus are upper tier. Elite night grade nomus are near high end. Grade nomus are high end. Grade are perfect tier. Alarm. You have earned title. All in one. Your stats will increase by 20% when facing a nomu opponent and by 30% when facing their creators. You also gain 40% more experience killing nomus. You have 8 low tier nomu corpses, 6 mid tier nomus, 1 upper tier nomu and 1 high end nomu were placed in your inventory. Halki, Sass. You too good. The two Kwamis just flew to Izuku and gave their hugs to Izuku. I was so worried, that was a strong opponent, even stronger than Hawk Moth. Kalki said. Sass nodded, you should have used our powers to help you. Thanks but I don't want to use you two as tools. I may need your help in emergencies, and when Ladybug calls me otherwise I just want to be friends with you two. The two Kwamis just smiled, they liked Izuku further and furthermore. Suddenly Izuku and the two Kwamis heard, get the fuck out of my way, I need to see if the nerd is alright. A guard wanted to say something but was pushed aside. Most of 1A followed her wanting to see Izuku. With Heian thinking, you are getting stronger per fight, but you could have died. With that she lunged at Izuku hugging him and sobbing on his shoulder. Izuku at that moment looked like a lost puppy not knowing what to do. He gently hugged her back with some patting on her back. Nerd, don't you ever do that stunt again or I will kill you myself. You all know who said that. No promises Kakin, you okay Heian. She just nodded with Izuku just sighing, how was everything for you guys? Then you came forth and explained what happened, Izuku just nodded hearing what happened inside. Momo then stepped forward, Izuku, you might want to see this. She gave Izuku her phone, there was a video of his fighting the high-end Nomu. He gave a confused eye towards Momo who just answered, look at the article name. Nodding, he read it out loud, the 10th national level hero. Then once again blinked not understanding. But the frustrated sigh as Izuku was dense then, during your little nap. Which caused Shoko to glare at Momo, the world leaders decided that you are the 10th national level hero. As you know, USA has two, Canada and Brazil both have one. Europe have two in the UK and Italy. Russia, China also have one, and now Japan has two. Now all of her classmates were giving her a curious eye, this means that you have the power to even declare war on other nations, travel visa free, and countries will come to you for a peace treaty. But also some countries will want you to work under them. Ashido asked, why a peace treaty? It was surprisingly Izuku who answered, national level heroes cannot be controlled like normal heroes. Nearly all of the hero systems around the world have a way to deal with S rank heroes if they go rogue. The only way to defeat a nation rank hero is by sending a stronger national hero against them, or have a national rank villain kill them. Then you then continued, so they form some sort of treaty making their country more favorable for you to stay in and not leave for instance to Brazil. Hey in just growled, you ain't leaving mister. I am staying at the moment hey in. He just patted her head. Suddenly the door slammed open, finally you are awake Izuku. The muscly woman said, yep he did grow stronger, I can sense it. Oh hey Kathy. Though the other students yelled star and striper Katsumi just growled go away. Hey in just glared at her for no apparent reason, that is what Izuku thought. She walked up to him and hugged him, feeling better than yesterday. Izuku smirked, I can practically regrow my exoskeleton overnight, so don't worry. It was mostly fatigue that caused me to go unconscious. A stare was received, with 1A looking between the two of them, Kathleen spoke first, you had six broken ribs, a twisted ankle, internal bleeding in four different locations, second degree burns, a dislocated shoulder, and 14 other broken or splintered bones. Not to mention you had poison in your body and torn muscles. Aki, and... Izuku asked not seeing the point. How the fuck do you just heal overnight, those injuries should at least make you stay in bed for one week. But the straight face he replied, a blessing from above. She just snorted not knowing it was true. Anyways she looked at his guests then back to Izuku, can we talk privately? Sighing, he replied sure. Turning to his classmates, can we talk later? If I am guessing what it is then it is important. Yumikij nodded, rest well my friend of the dark. When they all left, Izuku placed a silencing barrier, this is a silencing barrier, no one can hear us talk. She just nodded, I am sure you are aware by now that you are a national level hero or at least provisional right. Izuku nodded at that, she just slumped back on her chair, my superiors want me to get you as an American hero, or at least train under me. Izuku thought for a second this was a good chance for him to learn under a strong hero and make a difference. Though there was one thing, does she want it or not, what do you want? It took her some time to answer, in all honesty, I want you to intern under me. I know you can teleport, how far can you teleport? Not wanting to abuse his friend's power, he answered, I can travel around anywhere but once a day. He lied, he could travel multiple times per day, but being able to say one gives him some kind of freedom too. 
She nodded, I want you to intern under me, America crime rate is way higher than Japan, so you will gain more experience. Additionally, you could train under the number one American hero. She said with a smile and a thumbs up. Izuku just chuckled, you had me hooked under the intern bit, sure, but I if Japan needs me then that is the place I am going first. Didn't expect anything else Izuku. Anyways, here is my phone number text me. She left with a wink. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.